Welcome back guys to another episode of Decentralized Chain bringing you the latest news, reviews and blockchain tech. So today there is a lot of buzz around mainframe ICO. I've been hearing it in quite a few Telegram groups so I thought why not check it out and see what it's about and at the same time bring you guys a review. So mainframe ICO is looking to bring a completely decentralized and unhosted messaging platform with built-in encryption so content cannot be accessed by outsiders we've got a peer-to-peer -peer architecture as part of the overall main frame which means the network can't be disrupted we've got interoperability meaning that it can be used practically anywhere everywhere we've got dark routing capabilities so by that it's got content not being tracked as well as incentivization the idea being that the network can't be stopped because we are incentivizing those who are using the platform and providing and hosting solutions for that platform as well. So it's completely decentralized peer to peer. So let's have a look at what each of those areas really mean. So let's start with encryption. So the idea behind here is that your content cannot be opened. And the way that works is when a node decides to basically send on a message to another intended node within that group, it encrypts it with that public key. And so what then happens is as it makes its way through the various nodes that are acting as relays, only those who have the private key in order to decrypt that message will be able to do so so here we've got a sending a message to b c d e and f and then in between you can see that there are various nodes and as part of that you can see the encrypted message making its way through and when it gets to b the only part of the encrypted message that b is going to be able to ultimately decipher is the one that relates to their public key and so as you can see it then moves forward throughout and so forth so that's the encryption element within the overall platform when we then move on and look at dark routing, the idea here being is that you shouldn't be able to be followed throughout the network. So when you send a message from one person to another, the idea being is that you're not able to determine who those participants are within the group. And so what the way that works is, is that it associates a topic ID. So when you create a message um, or when you create a group using the dark routing functionality there is a topic id associated with that group and so those members that hold that topic id will ultimately be able to take that message along the way and decrypt it so here you've got a message sent by ac okay and it's got an encrypted message within there and then as you can see what it does is that it actually sends it pretty much to a number of nodes throughout the network so anybody eavesdropping in may be able to pick up that a message is being sent but what happens here is that the message is being sent to a number of individuals and only the individual or the node that has that topic ID will be able to once again decipher and decrypt it. So you've kind of got that dark routing functionality or the privacy functionality built into it. As we then move on, we've got incentivization. So the idea that the network cannot die. It's, it's an unhosted network so the idea being that those nodes who are participating or wanting to use the functionality also have the possibility to be able to provide network services as well and then from that be incentivized through payment of the tokens in order to do that so for example here you've got alice who can do routing handling uh, holding and storage so therefore she will set a certain rate in terms of how much she's looking for for providing those services and then you'll have another who's willing to use those services for that price so for example here you've got bob who would be willing to do routing holding storage and data and so there'll be a separate charge for that overall so that's how you've got incentivization that's the sort of token utility behind it as well and then as we move on we've got peer-to-peer -peer architecture so this is really looking at the decentralized aspect of it in a traditional web application on the very far left image what you'll have is the user's browser or device they will then normally interact with a web application and then the web application will then interact with the data and then it will flow through that single point of contact so as you can see here the developers pretty much host the app and the data and really it's the user that can only control the device so there are multiple points where it can break ultimately or there are points within this overall process where content or information can be leaked out if we then look at a standard non-backed web application you've got the user's device that then interacts with the data 
which is still hosted by the developer, but independent, not requiring a web application to go through. And then you've got the web application as well as part of that. Whereas if you kind of look at the model that we have within mainframe, the idea is that it's completely unhosted and the user is in control of the actual data itself and the request going back and forth and the user is providing that core functionality. Whereas all we have from the developer here is a web application in order to communicate back and forth. So once again, you've got that peer-to-peer -peer architecture where the network can't be shut down. Ultimately, if one of the nodes fails, another is there to pick up the slack. Now, one thing that I really like is that there is a prototype and I've recorded a prototype, so we're just gonna jump into that. So let's have a look at the actual prototype. Now, <clears throat> it's a really nice, clean design. So clearly they thought about UX, they thought about UI, and I really like that. As a product manager, you know, this, quite res this resonates quite well with me overall. And so you've got the option of starting it as a local mainframe node, so that's just running it locally, or you can then connect to a remote node instead if you don't wanna host services yourself. So here, we'll take the start the local mainframe node. Okay, so we go ahead. And all this is working, so I quite like this. It's now allowed me to create my node. So now it's asking for me to add my details. So let's just say decentralized chain. And we'll say main frame ICO. And let's click done. So it's got the option to add in. Yep, yeah, perfect. So it's got the option to add in an avatar. So let that load up. If we kind of go down, let's go through some of my old screens. So yeah, let's take that one, put that in. Fantastic. So we go through there. Now this is really good. So I'd already had a conversation just trying to understand how this platform works overall. So initially when I went in, I tried to create a channel and you know, I was gonna put in decentralized chain ICO. And you know, what I started noticing here was that I, I, I couldn't create the channel at all. So no matter what I select here, I couldn't create the channel. So I decided to then go and have a conversation in the mainframe telegram group. So here we are starting here. So I've kind of said, regarding the prototype, what can I do with it? Can I use it to send messages if someone else, is, if someone else has it running? Because I wasn't quite clear in the documentation, well, there wasn't, it was quite limited, so I couldn't quite figure out what I needed to do. Um, and then, so the admin comes back to me and he says, yes, you can. Onyx is a proof of concept. now. You know, at the end of the day, I understand it's a proof of concept. I certainly don't need to be told exactly what's in the white paper. My question was, how do I send messages really? So once again, I've kind of said, how do I create a channel? When can I give it the name, create button? You know, none of it highlights. So I've kind of gone through my issues. And then in between, you sort of come back and the admin have said it's an alpha test at this time. So there will be some kind of kinks. Now, at the end of the day, you know, he's not really answering my question. And this really leads me to believe that maybe potentially the admin within the within the Telegram community here doesn't really know much about the product itself. And I think that's quite key because if you're gonna be launching a new product, if you're gonna have brand advocates, you really should have people that understand the basics of what it is that your project does. And if you have a prototype available, they should really know how the prototype works. Not the low level detail, but at a high level, they should be able to explain how it works to someone if someone's asking questions, because ultimately this is the proof of concept. This is you showing to the rest of the market. This is what I've done. This is what we've got out there already in practice. So I've then further gone ahead and I've added in a screenshot just so they can see what it is that I'm referring to. And I said, look, it doesn't activate. So regardless, if you use direct mainframe. Now, as I've gone down, I've asked, you know, can they share a public key instead with me, right? Because I wanna test if the actual contact section works. You know, maybe I can add the public key in here and see if the direct messaging capability works. Um, and so once again, as we sort of go down, you know, the admin says, I don't have this installed on my computer. Now, come on guys, if you've got a prototype, you've got admins within the group, you should at least have this installed on your machine. I mean, it's it's just, it's what I would do if I was running my own product. At the end of the day, I wanna showcase it, I wanna shout about it, I wanna tell everybody about it so they can see. So, you know, more of an improvement, the admins should have it installed in their PC. It's not that difficult to install it. I've managed to install it straight away. So, as I keep going down, the admin then obviously says, looking at the screenshots, he said that you'd have to actually add somebody as a contact in order to create a channel, which makes sense now, because you're right, You, I would need to create a channel and then add my contacts in, which wasn't really clear to me from the beginning. I'd had to deduce that myself. So now obviously either he's gone away and asked someone, 
or you know it's coming to him slowly and that's fine so this individual here she chen has shared his public key or her public key so i've kind of gone ahead and i'm going to go and add it this time so let's copy that link or let's just copy the selected text we'll go ahead and then we'll drop the public key in there add the contact great so that's all been sent through now i think we just need to wait a while until that then refreshes there you go perfect so this individual's come up as coming as the electro master so potentially i could say hey it's worked ah yep and there you go the guy's replying back this is great i am creating a youtube video starring you as the contact so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm actually quite excited now so now i'm going to go ahead and create the channel and see if i can add him in so i'm just going to let this person know i'm going to create a channel to add you in so let's go ahead so let's go ahead and create the channel so here we'll say decentralized chain main frame if i can spell it right main frame ico review so we'll just go ahead and just create a direct channel um i'm not going to be too bothered about using well let's let's create the yeah no so let's have a look here what's going on here so now we need to add in our peers so here we go fantastic i can either create it as a dark channel or a direct channel so let's do create channel right hey i have now created a channel using dark send so let's just see what happens here so now this is really this is really cool i like this i mean this is what really fills me with confidence that we have a prototype that is not just a ui but actually works and functions to fulfill the basics of what the site and what the product or the program is trying to describe to you here and so this is really cool so i'll just wait for him to reply back and see what happens just trying to prompt this individual to really come back and try and start the next sequence of events within the channel that i've created so we'll see what happens here but i'm just prompting them on telegram as well so just to kind of show you really at the end of the day you know i'm on telegram within the community i'm asking questions and i'm getting the relevant answers back now as well so i'm quite happy about what i'm seeing and then likewise at the same time i can see that the individual's now typing which let me just highlight it here there you go so he's clearly trying to say some send something back to me fantastic no problem no problem no problem there you go so let's just say no problem thanks for the help right guys fantastic i really like what i've seen here i really like the prototype and i think this speaks wonders in terms of where the team can go so great now let's look at the roadmap overall so in terms of what they're looking to deliver they've got the initial mainframe element so that's kind of looking at the transactional and managed infrastructure for milestone one so directory services mailbox services and blockchain nodes no. so looking at the development roadmap we have uh, the first milestone which is called Apollo and that is really getting the mainframe node up and running so that requires the directory services mailbox services and blockchain nodes to be put in I don't see any timelines around this so it'd be interesting to see as to when that will be released because that will give you an indication of whether this is a short mid long term project it, it could be it's looking long term to me overall or mid to long term just by gauging from what we've seen so far then as we then move on we've got milestone two which is Hawthorne so this will basically be the beginnings of the incentivization that we spoke about before in terms of providing packet routing node service direct discovery functional swaps contracts for invoicing and being able to charge for the services back and forth and then as we then move down we've got milestone three which they've called gettysburg and this is where it's fully decentralized fully unhosted the product is out there 
it's there for everyone to use in its full capacity as well so overall the roadmap is looking good i like that it's broken down and it is quite detailed so if you do want to read through it you can do it's all available on the website so you know it's the only thing missing here is i would love to see a time frame now let's have a look at the team it really looks like we have an all-star team here overall we've got the ceo and founder and you can always go to the website here to go and do your due diligence and check out their linkedin profiles i've already done that i don't necessarily want to talk you through every single linkedin profile it can get very boring but overall you've got individuals like mark like carl who have previously run companies they've been within this space for a very significant amount of time they know what they're doing they've run successful companies they've had those companies acquired as well by larger organizations so that's really good also looking at the CTO he has a full stack engineer background and a significant one at that they've also got a business development and sales manager Brad so here you know it's always good to see business development and sales within the overall team a lot of you know ICOs that I do tend to see they're more heavy on the technical side whilst all well and good you do need someone who can build that brand who can get those sales through the door as well so really growing that awareness You've got VP for engineering, doing all the back end, and once again, PhD, scaling, they've all got significant experience in terms of that hosting experience, in terms of creating a messaging platform. They all have very significant backgrounds within there. As we then go further down, we've got additional engineering front end developers, Paul. We've got Milos Mozik. You know, once again, they're all previous developers with lead developer experience they've got the experience they've got the know-how behind it in order to make this project a success certainly from a technical perspective and then as we then move further down we've got head of marketing and our marketing is really key you need to get the message out there you need someone with experience with links and contacts in industry and so once again you know it's got well over a decade's worth of marketing experience behind them head of design and design is really important you know you as you would have seen from the prototype it's you know building a really clean application and engaging application which people want to use so let's move further down and look at the advisors so here we've got some stellar advisors really here we've got founder of google wave you know once again these are these are big name brands at the end of the day you've got the gm of yammer so yammer for those who don't know is a is a social similar kind of twitter platform used internally within organizations so clearly he's got the links within the collaboration world and this is one way that you could potentially bring this in because ultimately this is a collaboration tool and it is a collaboration tool for sensitive information stuff that you wouldn't want to share outside the organization you've got andy mclaughlin so we've got founder of huddle once again, we're talking about everything here is all about collaboration. All the advisors are really deeply embedded within the collaboration space. And this is a collaboration tool at the end of the day. So it's really key that you have advisors within that space who can open doors, open partnerships and guide you in terms of how you can then grow that product. You've got engineering manager at Zimbra, so open source enterprise email, more collaboration. You've got the founder of Sparrow, so it's an email product which has been acquired by Google. And then likewise, you've got product manager at Twitter as well, you know, focused on messaging. So they've got key team members with a great development background, all round team, looking at various aspects of running that business from marketing straight through down to the development piece. You've got advisors and investors who are also deeply embedded in this specific area as well around collaboration and messaging so this is really good and i'm really liking what i see overall now moving on let's have a look at the token metrics so they haven't released their token metrics in full yet uh, they're looking to build their telegram group to 20,000 members and so once that's there they'll then start releasing that so you know it's, it's a good marketing strategy as well it's basically getting more masses through the front door so they can talk about their project but from what i have been able to glean looking at it they plan to sell 50 percent of the entire token supply so i'm really happy with that and that's really good overall they're looking to raise a hard cap of 30,000 ethereum now, looking at the current price of Ethereum as it stands today, I'm getting it roughly at around $770. So the hard cap here is around 23 million is what they're looking to raise. I think that's a really good amount. You know, certainly for projects that are currently in ICO phase now at the moment, that really seems to be that sweet spot that everyone is kind of looking to raise. So not too much. And I, and I, and I think that works really well. 
In terms of token supply, nothing's been released as of yet, so I'm still looking to hear about that. So we don't really know what the cost of a single token will be as of yet. But overall, the hard cap's good, and if we have a decent token supply to go with it, then I think you've got some great token metrics. There's also mention of um, private pre-sales. Now, I don't know what the bonuses are. I haven't really been able to find out what that is. But one thing really cool that I like about this particular ICO is that they're not looking to take on private investors from anywhere. You have to be able to deliver something or bring something to the team to be part of that private sale. So the idea is that you're not just an everyday investor with lots of money, you're an investor that has partnerships, you're an investor that clearly has a background within this space that can help them open and unlock doors as well at the end of the day. So it kind of keeps the whales away to a certain extent. And then as we then move down, actually what I also really like is the participants of the private sale around one third of their tokens will be distributed immediately. The remaining two thirds, however, will be distributed over the course of a year. Now that's really good as well, because what that helps is ease any of the dumping effects that you get when tokens are unlocked straight away and bonuses are released straight away. So I quite like that. And I know that there is a strong vesting period as well for the overall teams. So I'm just trying to see if I can find it. I thought I saw something, but most probably not. Here we are. So will there be any lockup or release schedule for founders? So vesting will be three months after token generation event and the vesting will be monthly for a three year period so after three months they'll slowly start trickling in the tokens so the actual those who have got the vested period can start selling those up from the team perspective and from the founders perspective so that's really good as well so no one is going to be able to dump anything straight away immediately it will be a slow release over the course of a year for those who are in the private private sales and those who are founders and team members will be over the course of three years so once again really good now in terms of hype or awareness let's kind of have a look and see where we are with all of that the mainframe community on telegram is around 18,340 as i mentioned before once they hit 20,000 they're going to release the token metrics so you know that they've got a push they've got a drive behind that a little growth strategy as well so i like to see that as well looking at twitter they've got around 4,135 followers and i'm sure that will grow now i believe they're looking to launch their ico around sometime in march so we might be at the earlier stages or you know somewhere through the mid stages but clearly we're going to see a lot of ramp up leading up to the ico we still have the ico date which hasn't been released as of yet but will be once they hit twenty thousand telegram members now in terms of looking at the project overall as you know i like to use a radar chart it kind of gives me a visual overview of what the project is like as a whole and where they need to basically provide a bit more of a push to get better results so for the project, I've given it a four. I certainly like what they're doing. It feels like they're challenging Slack almost, um, but you know, more so uh, really focusing on the encryption and privacy side as well. The prototype, I've given it a five. Certainly from what I've seen and the way I've managed to you know, work my way around, go into Telegram, ask a few questions, even find somebody in the community who was willing to actually engage and try the prototype out with me. I thought that was wonderful and that really speaks wonders overall. The team, I've given it a four. They are a stellar team. They know what they're doing. Clearly have a deep rooted background in what they've done. They've The CTOs, the COOs, they've run companies before. The developers that they've got on, on the team have significant experience as well within that space. So I really like that. The advisors, once again, advisors are very deeply embedded within that space. They've got a lot of collaboration experience they know they've worked with those organizations that utilize those tools as well. I didn't see any advisors within the blockchain space, but ultimately if these guys are really looking to, you know, penetrate that collaboration space, having those advisors that they've got on board, I think will do wonders for the project overall. The token metrics at the moment, I've given it a two. I don't know enough in order to really take it higher than that. I certainly like the hard cap. I like the amount that they're trying to raise. I don't know what the total number of tokens are that are going to be available for sale yet. And that's obviously tied in with a Telegram group. Hype, I've given it a four. I like the way they're going with their hype. I like the way they're going with their awareness in terms of trying to draw more customers into the Telegram group to release the ICO metrics as well. So overall, you know, I certainly think this project has legs to succeed and definitely in the long term. 
in terms of the roadmap I need to see a bit more at the moment it's very high level and because it's so high level it's hard to gauge exactly how long it's going to take for this program or for this project to actually deliver but anyway guys I hope you've really enjoyed the anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed the review please leave any comments or feedback you have below always great to get a bit of conversation going speak to you soon